NFL mailbag time. G golf Wang, is that right? That's right, Golf okay. Wang. Okay, uh, who will the Hawks hire as OC? Are there any good ones? Yeah, obviously we did the, the candidate list video for Seahawks fans out there. Shane Steichen was immediately linked to the job. I don't Correct. love that hire. Um, I the re the updated report that came out kind of after we were filming it was Tony Elliott, the Clemson offensive coordinator. I'd be intrigued by that. Okay. I I am very interested in going and getting the Clemson OC. It's different. It is risky. Don't get me wrong. The passing game is not that complex. But I think it would actually fit Russell Wilson pretty well for what I think he needs to start doing, having more success in in that short passing game. I think it could be a fit. If it is, I'm very intrigued. But I am excited to see which route they end up going because it'll tell us a lot about what Pete Carroll wants to do on offense. We wondered how many questions it would take to get a Deshaun Watson trade question, and it took two, Shanov. Good job. Deshaun Watson to Denver for the ninth pick, the Broncos' third rounder, and Drew Locke. Houston Texans laugh and hang up the phone. Yeah, you're right. Uh, this is a quarterback in Drew Locke who maybe is the answer, maybe not for Denver. No. Nope. Probably not for Houston. So let's just say Drew Locke's value in the bubble is what? Third rounder? Probably something along those lines. If like you're gonna trade, it's gotta be like Drew Locke and I think three first round. Picks. Yeah, you have to give a lot of draft capital because Houston might want to go draft their own quarterback, and that's probably what they would be trying to do. What might make the most sense, frankly, is Houston gets draft capital, Drew Locke goes to an unknown third team. That's nowhere near enough for Denver. It starts with a lot more first round picks. I want to give a special shout out to uh, Burn and Spades for the one dollar super chat. Question coming in from Rohit. What up? Give Greenlaw, Jimmy, two firsts and a third for Watson. Do you think the 49ers have a realistic shot? Uh, I, I'm intrigued by you giving them a player. I appreciate when you do that, Andre Greenlaw. Greenlaw, I think that's, Jimmy, and two firsts. Yeah, Jimmy Garoppolo, two firsts and a third. I think that's enough. I think it needs another premium asset. Okay. Now, maybe it's a third first. Honestly, if I'm San Francisco, like you could maybe you take out Greenlaw and you throw in three firsts, Jimmy G is whatever, and a third rounder. I think that actually might work I mean, this if is they were to move on from him. Because, like, if you're San Francisco, you need a quarterback. Yeah. Like, that, I think that's what's holding you back. If you get Deshaun Watson from Jimmy Garoppolo, yeah, you'll have other holes, like at cornerback, for example, but those will be lessened because your quarterback is a drastic upgrade. So if you can get Watson if you're San Francisco, I'm all over it, knowing those first-round picks aren't as valuable as even to say, like, a team like Denver that we just mentioned. So if y'all want to be featured in our NFL mailbags, you got to subscribe. We only feature questions from people that do click that big red button, that sub. Because guess what? We are 100% free, but we want to be able to interact and talk with our friends and people that show us love, people that support us, especially through a crazy year that was 2020. We just want to say that we appreciate you, and that's why we continue to make videos. So if you want to be featured in one of our mailbags, watch us live Wednesday and Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific, and click that big red button that says subscribe. Let's go to sample email. Get a picture. <laughs> Thoughts on DeMarcus Ware maybe being Cowboys D-line uh, coach? I wouldn't assume Ware comes in as the defensive line coach, mostly because I'm not sure Ware wants to be a full-time NFL coach. I think at some level he likes being able to do other things in his life. Sure. Now, what I do like that is what he's kind of done in the past, and that's almost as a guest teacher. And if players want to work out with him, kind of in the more becoming and more popular, and frankly, more important off-season <laughs> coach style. So if you're a Cowboys player and want to go work with DeMarcus Ware, kind of like Dak Prescott does with John Kitna right now, that makes a lot of sense to me. And it also allows the whatever players work with DeMarcus Ware to not be limited by the CBA and the hours you can spend with players. So I think DeMarcus Ware might make a better fit, not as a full-time defensive line coach, but as more of a personal trainer coach. That one I'm actually very intrigued by, which he's kind of done a little bit in the past. This next question is coming in from Dodger Deluxe. I think the Eagles promote Deuce Staley or pay Lincoln Riley big money. <laughs> Yeah, I think the Eagles think that they can get Lincoln Riley or at least or have a Ryan hope of, of, of getting Riley. I do think in the end what's a lot more likely is Lincoln Riley says, nah, I'm going to stay at Oklahoma because it's a better job than Philadelphia's job. If we're being honest, frankly, there's like maybe one it or two jobs that's in the NFL that's better than Oklahoma. He's already making like, what, $8 million a year? Yeah, and the what? security. Yeah, big Come money on. in the NFL. Like, you're going to pay him sixteen. <laughs> First time coach? Ooh, owners aren't going to like that one. Deuce Staley, though, He's is a very interesting name because I'm not sure this is going to be the most sought-after job. 
And if you still want to roll with a guy that could get so, gets along well with Howie Roseman and not totally blow it up, it makes some sense there. So go down in the comments section and predict. You know what, Tom? I'm going to make this the pin comment okay. on today's video. Who should the Eagles hire to be their head coach after they fire Doug Peterson? So when you're getting hit with that YouTube ad break, I want you to scroll on down and let us know. This one's coming in from Mitty. If Pete and John draft and Najee Harris, well, that Najee. means Carson's time with Seattle is done. You will know what Chris Carson's future is with Seattle well before the Seahawks draft because free agency, remember, comes before the NFL March draft. 17. So Carson will either sign an extension yep. or he'll leave in free agency. As for Najee Harris, Seattle has no first-round pick. Their second-rounder is a little bit later. I don't think Najee Harris is going to be there. Yeah, so like in it. the end... I don't think it's really much of a I chance also don't Seattle know if Chris gets Najee Carson's Harris. going to be there because I think he's going to ask for a little bit more money. Yeah, I think that's very possible. So I, I, we'll see what happens, but I the two aren't that connected in terms of r r results because the decision will be made on Carson before they get a chance to draft Harris. Speaking of money, we're going to try to hook you guys up with some free money as well. And if you want to be able to bet on the NFL playoffs, if you want to put your money down on who's going to win, the Super Bowl, you can do that at Sugar House. How? you got to go to chatsports.com slash betnj. You're going to get a 100% deposit match. What does that mean? You put down $100, you get 100 for free. So people that are in New Jersey, people in the tri-state area, go ahead and take advantage of this deal we got going on there because that's how you're going to go ahead and get started. But they're not the only sponsor in today's show, Tom. We also got Bet Rivers, same exact deal, 100% deposit match. That link is a little bit different. So if you're in Illinois, if you're in Indiana, we got you covered. Mm -hmm. Chatsports.com slash betil. Chatsports.com slash wait. Chatsports.com slash right. betil. Yeah, Sorry, I was getting a little bit mixed up. Yeah, look, these are different links because in order to place a bet, you have to be in one of those states. Correct. But you can download their app. You can sign up, Ooh, get, to get the, the deposit match anywhere. So maybe you're going to head to Indiana in a couple weeks or you're moving there or, or you work there or whatever. Download you the app. You can download it now, get it all set up, and then place your bets once you're in there. Got a super chat coming in from Bryce. What up, brother? Should the Lions hire GM or head coach first? Uh, sounds Who? like they're going to hire their GM first. Uh, I, I got to double check the names here, but the Rams guy I'm drawing a blank on appears to be the, the, the favorite right now in terms of their GM hire. I typically like to go GM hire first yep. if you have to pick one first, but I also would be fine with a GM and head coach coming in at the same time. That's more or less what the Niners did with the with the Kyle Shanahan, John, John Lynch. Lynch combo. That worked out pretty uh, well. So it, it doesn't matter too much who ends up getting hired first, but you got to make sure those two work together. Yeah. You don't want to just kind of hire one of them and then like, oh well, yeah, you're gonna we're gonna sign you there and have it be a disaster there. Brad Holmes was the name, by the way. The Lions could hire. He's with the Rams right now. Keep an eye out for him as GM. Hey Bryce, if you're a big Lions fan, go subscribe to our Lions channel, youtube.com slash Lions today. Got a question coming in from Burning Spades. Actually it's a super chat. Appreciate it. Based mm -hmm. off the top candidates for head coach and GM for the Falcons, who would be at quarterback, trade, draft, or free agency? I think the most, the there, really there are two options as far as I'm concerned I for the Falcons. It's Matt Ryan. And it's almost regardless of who they end up hiring as head coach or GM, right? It's Matt Ryan is your heavy favorite because he's under contract and expensive to, to move on from. And if it's not, then you draft someone at four. Yeah. Or even both. I think that's the most likely outcome here for the Falcons. Uh, uh, trading for a quarterback, I don't think that's a great path there because if you're adding someone, it means they're expensive. At that point, just stick with your current option. Draft, though, makes some sense, or you just stick with Matt Ryan. So I guess we're talking about bad teams. Let's continue it here, Tom. Who's going to be the worst NFC East team in 2021? Is it going to be the Dallas Cowboys Type C? Philadelphia Eagles Type E? Maybe it's the Washington football team Type W or the New York Giants Type G? Who's going to be the worst team in the NFC East in 2021? Who do you think? It's a good question. Uh, the team that gives me the most concern it's the is, Eagles. is, is it, the Eagles because I don't know what path they're going to choose. I actually feel best about the Cowboys if they retain Dak Prescott. It might come down to Washington or New York, though, though in the end because I got some concerns about quarterback at both of those spots, too. So Chris, made with real cheese, would it be more interesting for the Niners, Trey Lance, or Deshaun Watson? I mean, Deshaun Watson. It's Deshaun Watson. But I'd argue Trey Lance is more attainable for that organization. I agree. 
All right, next question coming in is from Johnny Lopez. Levante David to the Cowboys. I think he would fit well with what Dan Quinn's going to try to do on defense. That's your dude right there. I do think it's going to be a little bit expensive, though. Levante oh, sure. David is not going to settle for anything more than really a true market linebacker price. So you got to give him at least a Jalen Smith contract, and you don't save a ton of money. You don't save all of it moving on from Jalen Smith. So and when it comes to linebacker, yeah, let's keep an eye out for some guys. David would be at the top of, like, the dream list. Yep. Unconvinced he's going to be within the price tag list for, for the Dallas Cowboys. Absolutely love this name here, Jake Steak Farm. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, should the Kansas City Chiefs re-sign Sammy Watkins? It's a good question. I really think it really comes down to what his ultimate value is. I say no, I let him hit the market. Yeah, I think you can let him leave. I know McCall Hardman hasn't been as great as they were hoping for, I think. I could see the Chiefs going, ah, screw it, let's just draft someone in the top 64, 96 Somebody picks who can receiver run fast. and good. just plug him on in there. That might make the most sense there. If Watkins is going to be expensive, I think it's probably time to save some money on offense as the Mahomes contract gets expensiver and expensiver as it moves along. Agreed. So fill in the blank here. Sammy Watkins is a top blank wide receiver. Top 36? Is he a top 36? Because I don't know. Because that's a wide receiver three. Is he healthy? Well, that's not a wide receiver three. I'm thinking fantasy. You're thinking fantasy. <laughs> I'm thinking NFL. Okay. And uh, that's like kind of a high-end wide receiver two, but there also aren't a full list of wide receiver twos in reality. Top 50 receiver, yes or yes, no? Yes, top 50. Okay. So we're narrowing it down. Probably top 40. Top 30. I don't think he's top, I don't think is he's top he, 30. Is he healthy? Can I, I, can I get a healthy, healthy 16 games out of Sammy? Playoff Sammy Watkins, yes. Okay. Regular season Sammy Watkins, yeah. I'm going to end up going now. This next one's coming in from the great house of Constance Von Nouvelle. Buccaneers trade for Tua. Well, what are they giving up that makes the Dolphins go, yeah, sure? Like, I, I guess in this scenario, they're taking a Justin Fields or a Zach Wilson at three. Sure. And the Bucks, I think, at minimum are giving up their first rounder, if not more than that. Yeah. But that's just kind of doing the same thing. Like, if you're Miami, like, you're taking one lottery ticket for another lottery ticket. Yep. I, I would actually advise against that if I'm, if, if I'm Miami. If I'm Tampa, sure, go for it. I just don't think it's all that realistic in the end. We got a lot of questions flowing in here, and if we miss your question, I apologize. You can blame Tom or slide into his DMs <laughs> on Twitter. He is at What Going Downy. If you want to ask me anything as well, you can always hit me up. I'm on Instagram at MitchellRen365, but we understand that we can't get to all y'all's questions. It's why our DMs are open. So please hit us up, ask us those questions. We got this next question coming in from. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you got to say it. A.K. Shitsana? All right, close enough. Kind of um, early, but who will win the NFC next year? Yeah, honestly, it's too early. I'm sorry, buddy. Free I, agency draft, a lot can happen. Like whoever, How about this? Whoever wins the NFC this year is your favorite. <laughs> wow. Like, I, I just saying. That, Unless I it's that. the Saints, because then I can see Drew Brees retiring. Sure, okay, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. All right, this is the last question here from Brett Stevens. Can the Cowboys trade for Greedy Williams? For the Dan Quinn system. I don't know why. And Cowboys fans keep asking me about Browns corners, and I get it. I don't really think the Browns are going to bail on Greedy Williams quite yet. I, I know it's early, and he's been a bit banged up at times this year. In fact, didn't play this season now that, now that I think about it. So, no, I don't think the Browns are going to bail on Greedy Williams already. I think that's pretty unlikely if you're the, the Dallas Cowboys.